I thought I would do a quick one today because I know for some of you on these tuxbows that you struggle to keep your alignment nice, that's nice and when you go to sew they start sort of drifting um, one side or the other and also how to make a couple of cute little tiny embellishment bows. This is a mini chair and this is a mini tailed tux bow and like I said just how much of a difference just adding like I said this is like 12 centimeters a ribbon like six inches a ribbon like I said it nine mil ribbon and how much of a difference it can make just to making your bow just look a little bit much cuter without actually doing an awful lot of work and the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about today as you can see on these ones what I have done is this one is the seven and a half inches that I typically do on a one and a half inch um, tux bow and this is seven inches times two for a double tux bow because the other thing that I get questioned obviously I have a standard set of working inches uh, values for all of my tux bows so like for three inch I use 12 inch um, for two inch I use nine inch for the one and a half inches I use seven and a half and so on and like one uh, one one inch I use sort of six or six and a half so like I said the thing that people ask is like how big would six inches a six inch double tux bow be and the answer is two centimeters if you wanted a three two and a half centimeter one you would take it up to six and a half if you wanted a three inch one inch tux bow take it up to seven inches and um, basically what you can do with your inches if you work between sort of your one inch to half inches so on the one inches you can sort of go from five and a half to seven inches so you can go five and a half five five sorry five five and a half six six and a half up to seven the seven ones which is these ones are the most flared like longer ones the smaller values are the ones that are sort of more squared so like i said you can play around with your measurements and i will put in the description below the sort of workable inch values that you can work between where you'll still get a nice bow shape but um it still still sits nicely and balances because once you go past a certain point or when you go down too low on a certain point it starts to throw off the balance and your bows just won't look quite as structured so like i said i just thought you'd like to know that as well so like i said i'm going to teach you a couple of alignment tricks and the other thing is is obviously on this one and this one i have them attached to these super super soft these are known as um, crafty duck headbands um, they're like nylon headbands they're the softest ones and the most stretchy ones that you can get in the uk market if you have, see the word um, crafty duck in front of a nylon headband you know you're getting quality in the uk and i do have a non-crafty duck one and you'll be able to tell the difference because like i said these start off smaller so before you stretch them they're quite small this is a lesser quality version and as you can see it's quite a bit bigger than the crafty duck version and also there's a lot left give in it so if you put this on child and child's got a slightly bigger than average head um, these are the ones that sort of start to slightly mark the child if they're wearing them for an extended period of time whereas with the crafty duck ones you don't have that issue and apologies if i've said the name wrong i'll put the correct name in the description just in case i've worded it wrong because i do occasionally get muddled that way but like i said these super nice soft ones and you can get them i do believe eva's uh, bows and crafts supplies uh, love crafts and uh, lovey crafts limited and a few others all stock these as their supplier so like i said i'll put them in the description below and the names of the suppliers that you can get these nice good quality ones from okay so i'm going to show you how to attach it to the nylons how to attach it to your crocodile clips and how to attach it to a bobble as well because that's another thing that a lot of people ask like the difference between actually attaching them and like I said how much ribbon you can get away with and what I'll do not only for the one inch ribbon which I've been working with today and the 1.5 I'll also put the workable measurements for the two and in two inch two and a half inch and three inch measurements just so you've got something you can play around with and adjust to sort of what makes 
most suitable for you because like I said they're going to make bigger and longer bows so like I said if you need a slightly wider or smaller bow in a certain ribbon size you can work out what best measurements work for you. So I've already got two pieces of a one and a half inch ribbon in this lovely mustard colour. This is one of my favourite colours. It's called dandelion I believe and they're both cut to the shorter six inches. Now I have already heat sealed all my edges and I've also folded these directly in half and heat creased my centres like so and as you can see I've also pinned my centres. Now the main thing for keeping double tux bows it's all about your alignments so double check that you have actually cut both of your ribbons the same length okay double check that your creases are the same okay and this is before we even start doing everything else now the reason i pin and like i said i make sure my crease is very visible is when you fold in from where your crease is you want to go half a centimeter over so while you're practicing before you get this visually if you really want to can you see my overlap is always half a centimeter and i can sort of new do that by instinct now like I visually know how much that half centimetre is so when I do this the other side again so there's the overlap that side there's the overlap that side and as you can see bring it upwards so you can it is one centimetre over so half centimetre each way and once you master that on all styles, that natural half centimetre overlap, it will start to help, like I said, the like natural structure of your bow. And again, like I said, see, I didn't even use my roller and I just instinctively do it. Like I said, the more you practice, the easier it'll become and like I said the more naturally you'll just start to do it without even thinking about it okay so now we've got our two squares and as you can see if you put them flat on the desk our centers are lined up and our edges are both even and if you fold those in half like so down our creases and do this which is the other trick I do to make sure that everything's in alignment the folds are all even everything is balanced and that's what you need to do before you even start contemplating your stitches the better you get these lined up and the better everything is sort of joined the better off you'll be and then obviously I've got my double threaded extra strength gutterman thread and when you're doing doubles, obviously I showed you on the tech, uh, the tux bow series that you can do sort of um, three creases or two creases on your 1.5 inch ribbon. When you're doing double, I would always recommend only doing your um, two creases, not three. And the same on your three inch ribbon. Instead of doing um, eight, always do six when you're doing doubles because it will just help the set of the bows when they're together. So like I said, you just want your four stitches to get your two creases, not th three to get six. So in, one, two, out, one, two, three, four. In the back, you'll have two. And again, because we've done six inches, this will be a much smaller bow than this one. And again, take the pin out from above for one, two, three, four straight down that crease okay and then when you push them down make sure both your creases are front way up like this and as you can see my stitches 
are completely through those creases. Now hold them with your fingers like so. And push them together until you get your two creases on either side. And your stitch mark here is the center. So when you wrap, you want your thread to go over that center that side. And again, the center this side is where your stitch is coming through this side. So use your thread to line that up around there and go round a couple of times like so, stitch off in the back, however you personally prefer. Okay. And there you go. You've got Very well balanced tux bow. You've got your one dip in each bit. You've got your two creases on each bow side. And like I said, this is shorter. So as you can see, compared to the seven inch, so like I said, that's seven and a half. This is six. Like I said, that one is three and a half inches wide. This one is only two and a half inches so like i said that's the big difference like i said taking or adding those inches can sort of have on the size of your bow now we're going to make a super cute little chair bow and like i said you need roughly six inches of ribbon but like i said i'll put all the measurements in the description i'm just re-threading my needle won't be a second and with these little mini bows, we want to do always do four teeny, 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 tiny stitches. So I've got my, just measure it. Sorry, I've done eight inches on this one to give myself a little bit of play when I want to cut down. So I've done eight inches and I have folded that in half and heat creased my center. And what I do, is I fold these over the tails to get this loop shape here and I make sure each tail that's not long enough is one and a half inches long and then I can pin there and then take your pin Take it to that crease that we've got underneath and you get this which like I said is a mini chair so like I said right over that central crease and then I just pin that like so then take your needle And thread make sure you pressing your loops down and holding them against tails when you do your stitches in and you want to start in this point one two three and your fourth one will be going up through that point there from beneath. There we go. So that is the front. We'll pull that up. So in, one across, out, one, two, three, four. And on the back, we've got two teeny tiny stitches. Okay. And again, I'll put the stitch guides in the descriptions as I like to now. And you can pinch that together. And you get two teeny teeny tiny creases wrap round keeping as central as possible and then you stitch off in back however you like 
Now on these ones, I don't add a centre, I glue these to the bow and then wrap the centre around both to give it sort of extra attachment to the bow. Just re the thread off in the next, what, ready for the next bow? That's better. Okay, so if you want, thread, press that so you've got this look on your hand. And what I also like to do is I like a nice straight edge tail so I go straight upwards like so and the same on the other side right at an angle careful you don't cut the bow loops at the top can you see that that one's gone a little bit deeper up so I'm just gonna even that side and always heat seal and then all I do is take this little one and you just want a touch of glue Right on the back of that thread join, like this, teeny teeny tiny bit. Line that up with your centre and place like so. Hold that for a couple of seconds so it's all nicely lined up. And we're going to attach this one to the nylon baby band. Okay. Now, as you can see here, you've got the side that rolls in, this is the back, and then you've got the side that curves round. This is typically the front of a bow, your baby band. So, I open that up a teeny little bit, and what you do is you put a touch of glue on the back of your bow, on the centre, not a lot, and then take this with it slightly open like this as I said you want the curved rolly bit over back this flat side against the bow and like I said you can open that up a little bit for when we wrap our centre okay I've got some matching dandelion 9mm I'm going to heat seal that end and we're going to glue this round. There you go. So teeny tiny touch of glue on the back of there. Make sure you've centred it to the bow. So like I said, it's central to this and it's not over to one side or the other. Because that's the other thing that throws off the balance of the bow. And you want to wrap round a good couple of times as normal. Just take my glue stringy off that. So once, round, make sure you can't see that ribbon underneath, round again, cut down your excess, heat seal that and add a touch of glue. Now, obviously, from the edge of our heat seal, to stop that from fraying, you do occasionally get like a little ridge that you can see underneath. Now, if you want to, like I said, you can take a tiny bit of felt, if you've got felt, and just do a little bit of felt over that to stop that being against the child's head. Like I said, you don't need a great deal. Get a and always make sure it's the soft wool felt and not um, like nylon polyester harder felt. And you would just want the teeniest little square like so. Make sure that goes over and what I do is once I've glued it this curvy bit of the headband I like to make sure that that goes over my edges of the felt like so so that that rough edge that we've got for gluing the back of our bands is not against the baby's head 
So there you go, that's a little trick for you. Like I said, just a teeny tiny little bit of felt. Like, like I said, it's good for your offcuts. Match it to your colour of your headband or like I said, do white. Or some people have the soft silk like name. So if you've got the name of your brand on like a little hand stitch like handmade by um, Catherine, like I said, you could put that on there. And again, that would cover that edge of that ridge on that wrap round. So like I said, that's a little trick. And that's what it looks like on the nylon in the slightly smaller measurements with the super cute cute little embellishment bow okay so we're now going to do a little one inch one and a teeny tiny tails down tux bow so again with these i have heat sealed all my edges I have folded both of these in half, half and heat creased the centres and pinned the centres. And again, even though it's a smaller amount of ribbon, we're still going to go that half a centimetre into the centre on both sides, on both pieces. And I do believe I've done slightly smaller on these ones. I'll just measure. Yeah, I've done my five and a half on this, five inches on this one or five and a half instead of my typical six. So again, this will give you the slightly smaller size. And again, naturally done half a centimetre over that side and pin back on your crease. Repeat on your other side. Half a centimetre over. In. half a centimetre over pin on your crease fold it up and double check your alignment same on this one Fold it up, double check your alignment, bring them together, double check that they all line up. Okay, once you're happy that that's actually 100% accurate, you can take your pin out. And the same on this one as your 1.5 inch, you just want your four stitches to get your two creases on both. So in, one, two, out, which is one, two, three, four, and the back you'll have two. And the same again. Take your pin out, four, to get your three creases, two creases, sorry. And I'll put the amount of stitches and creases that you need on all your double tuck spur measurements as well. There you go. So in, across, out, in, across, out. One, two, three, four. Okay. And again, hold them in your fingers like so. And push them down until you've got your two creases each side and again use where that line is where you've gone in for your first stitch where the knot is to keep your center and again use that side as well do that nice and tight like so and back stitch however you personally prefer. Okay, so as you can see, you have got a perfectly even one inch ribbon bow and this one is 
two and a half or two and a little bit inches wide and the same long so like that's the difference and like i said the measurements can actually make compared to this one which is obviously the six and a half so obviously i've shown you how to do these mini chair ones this is how to do the teeniest tiniest tux bow in the history of the world and i've got two bits of ribbon here one that i've already creased in the centre and heats it heat creased and that is three and a half inches and the tails are three inches okay so I'm going to start with the tails it's not my thread that's already done so with the tails you fold that three inches in half Heat crease your centre and you want to do four. One, two, three, four. Teeniest, teeniest, tiniest stitches in the world. Okay. And on this one, you want to fold in just a touch. Both sides exactly like we just did the tux bows on the bigger versions. Right over the creases so you've got something to stitch through. And from above, four teeny tiny stitches. One, two, three, untangle that for your last one up from behind to the edge like so so in across out in across out two tiny little stitches two tiny little stitches like i said they're incredibly small so it's incredibly difficult to see but like i said squeeze those together so you get two teeny tiny little creases on each piece and wrap nice and tight like so, I always give the tails a little pull to get them to naturally fall down a little bit. When you're happy that they're nice and tight, you can stitch off. off that excess thread and that is the beginnings of your super super cute teeny tiny tailed tux bow and again cut your tails up really deep like so and I use that as a guide so you can see where the scissors are touching against that edge there to make both the tails as deep on both sides don't forget to heat seal and we're going to take our nine mil heat seal you want a teeny tiny touch of glue just here and on the back of our little tail tucks we are going to glue that there and we're going to wrap around nice and tight like so and I always go around twice just to keep it nice and held tightly there we go Heat seal our edge again and you glue that down Okay, 
And there you go. That is the teeny, tiny, mini tux, tail tux bow. Okay, and we're going to attach this little one to a bubble. And like I said, we're going to have that at an angle here. So we're just going to put a touch of glue on the back. And only a little bit because we don't want it to seep either side of the bow and show on our nicely made tucks. So place that where you want it at whatever angle you want it. And I always hold it for a, a few seconds. Like so. Once you're happy with everything, like I said, you take your bobble. I always do the seamless ones and I always glue where the join is. So take your little bow. You want a tiny spot of glue at the back. Like I said, take your bobble where your join is. Place that on with your 9mm again. I use the bit of glue that's gone either side of the bobble. And pinch that down like so and again hold it for a couple of seconds before you wrap so it doesn't slip and wrap that round your center nicely again at least twice once make sure you can't see any of the ribbon edges underneath the top layer touch of glue and roll that over like so and there you go that is a super cute little embellished double tux in the one inch ribbon and obviously I'm going to show you how to attach this one to a clip and again got the last little bit of my nine mil in this green colour and like I said, this is a six and a half or a seven inch version of this one. And I've already done the chair bow embellishment on that one. So we're going to add a touch of glue to the back of our alligator clip. Turn our bow over. Make sure that that's nice and central. Like I said, you don't want too much glue on your alligator clip because you don't want it to again seep over the sides of our Centre, heat seal on 9mm. Touch of glue there. Open up our clip. In fact, before that sets, I apologise, that is a 45. That is, yeah, about 50. That is much too big for that though. I will get. There you go, 31. That is better. And I'll put the sort of ideal clip sizes for the ribbon widths as well. Because again, that helps with balancing the structure of your bows as well. So hopefully this has answered any questions about, like I said, straying from your standard tux bow sizing and like I said the difference the actual overall size of the bow is going to be. So for like every half centimetre that you add to your measurements, you add like a centimetre onto the size of the width sort of thing. If you add an inch, like I said, you add like half an inch to the size and so on, but like I said, play around. Decide what, like I said, is most visually appealing to yourself or what your customers personally prefer and have a play around. And hopefully this has helped you with your alignment and how to keep your stitches as you go to cinch them, etc. It's taught you how to add a cute little accessory just to give your bow a little bit of 
there and how to attach it to the alligator clip the um, nylon headband and to a bubble so you can do different sites like I said you can do baby baby sets you can do little pigtail sets you can do clippy sets whatever your customers personally prefer like I said you can play around and do whatever you feel looks best okay so thank you for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe and um, we'll speak to you all soon bye